Hi there, our highly valued, treasured and esteemed viewers, and listeners and welcome back to your channel of choice. This video I am about to present was compiled by Dr. Nath Arawa, a clinical pharmacist by training and profession who is the founder of Progressive Pharmacotherapy Consultants. The premier virtual clinical pharmacy institute for capacity building for healthcare workers. The Virtual Clinical Pharmacy Institute with a Difference, where patient safety, medication therapy management and optimal clinical outcomes are very crucial and non-negotiable to us. Here we seek to remain your premier source of crucial tips for high-impact pharmacotherapy services. So, on behalf of the Institute, I humbly urge you all to sit back and spare me part of your very precious time to share with you very useful tips which may prove very, very handy in your line of duty. I now welcome you all to part 469 of our pharmacotherapy series, which majors in adult hematologic malignancies. The next case reads. LPG is a 26-year-old woman with a month-long history of painless swelling around her collarbone and drenching night sweats. She reports increased fatigue and, feeling unwell, over the past six months. Radiography revealed a cervical, mediastinal, and inguinal lymph node enlargement. Excisional biopsy of the cervical lymph node revealed nodular sclerosing Hodgkin lymphoma. Because of anemia and thrombocytopenia on presentation, a bone marrow biopsy was performed and found to be positive for lymphoma cells. All other laboratory values are normal and she is otherwise in very good health. So my first question to you reads. What is the goal of therapy for LPG? Hodgkin lymphoma, formerly referred to as Hodgkin disease, is a B-cell neoplasm consisting of characteristic Reed-Sternberg cells within an inflammatory background. Hodgkin lymphoma represents approximately 10% of lymphomas and will account for an estimated 9,050 new diagnoses in 2015 in the United States. Occurrence of Hodgkin lymphoma displays a bimodal age distribution primarily occurring in young adults with a second peak at approximately age 65. Although once a uniformly fatal disease, improvements in treatment over the last 50 years represent a remarkable success story as now three out of every four new cases can be cured. Given that long-term survival is expected for most patients, Delayed consequences of therapy have a heightened importance in management of this disease. Hodgkin lymphoma is categorized as either classical Hodgkin lymphoma or nodular lymphocyte predominant, according to the appearance of tumor cells and the composition of the tumor microenvironment. Classical Hodgkin lymphoma is further subdivided, in order of prevalence, as nodular sclerosing, mixed cellularity, lymphocyte rich and lymphocyte depleted nodular lymphocyte predominant hodgkin lymphoma accounts for only 5% of all hodgkin lymphoma and has a unique immunophenotypic profile and therapeutic approach the remainder of this section will focus on classical hodgkin lymphoma prognosis is multifactorial and incorporates systemic symptoms stage of disease and the size of the mass the International Prognostic Score, abbreviated as IPS, for Hodgkin lymphoma describes hypoalbuminemia, that is albumin less than 4 grams per deciliter, anemia, that is a hemoglobin less than 10.5 grams per deciliter, male gender, age above the age of 45, stage 4 disease, leukocytosis, that is a WBC count above 15,000 per millimeter cubed, 
and lymphocytosis, lymphocyte count less than 8%, as adverse indicators. According to the International Prognostic Score for Hodgkin lymphoma, LPG has two adverse indicators anemia and stage 4 disease. This suggests that, while she presented with advanced disease, she maintains favorable long-term prognosis. My next question to you reads, what is appropriate initial therapy for LPG? The objective of initial therapy in Hodgkin lymphoma is to maximize the potential for disease eradication while simultaneously limiting the risk of late effects. This requires stratifying patients according to prognostic factors. European Organization for the Research and Treatment of Cancer, abbreviated as EORG, criterion is commonly employed to divide patients into one of three groups early stage favorable, early stage unfavorable, and advanced disease. Early stage favorable patients have stage 1 or 2 disease and have no large mediastinal adenopathy, an erythrocyte sedimentation rate less than 50 mm per hour, equal to or less than 3 involved nodes, and are age equal to or less than 50 years. Patients with stage 1 or 2 disease not meeting this criterion are classified as early stage unfavorable. Patients with stage 3 or 4 Hodgkin lymphoma are considered to have advanced disease. Radiation alone was the standard of care for decades in early stage disease. Although effective, the utility of this approach is limited by substantial long-term toxicity. The incorporation of combination chemotherapy into Hodgkin lymphoma protocols has both improved long-term disease control and enhanced tolerability. Consequently, radiation therapy alone is no longer an acceptable approach. The regimen ABVD and abbreviation for doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and dacobazine, is the most commonly used regimen in modern practice and supplanted the previous standard, MOPP and abbreviation for mechlorothamine, vincristine, procarbazine, and prednisone, by demonstrating superior efficacy with reduced incidence both of acute toxicities and long-term complications such as secondary leukemia and sterility. In early stage favorable Hodgkin lymphoma, Chemotherapy with doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and dacobazine can either be given for four to six cycles alone, or for two to four cycles followed by sequential radiation therapy. Neither approach is considered superior because overall survival appears to be equivalent. Comparative studies suggest that chemotherapy alone portends a reduced risk of latent adverse events whereas dual therapy provides a lower rate of disease recurrence. Patients with early unfavorable disease require a longer duration of therapy, lasting four to six cycles, and incorporation of radiation therapy becomes essential. For patients with advanced disease, Chemotherapy becomes the mainstay of treatment and the duration of doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and dacobazine is increased to 6 to 8 cycles. Radiation is conventionally reserved to augment therapy for poor responders or patients requiring rapid debulking. A distinctive feature of doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and dacobazine is the general avoidance of dose reductions or delays secondary to leukopenia due to the heightened importance of maintaining dose intensity in this disease. The Stanford 5 regimen incorporates a shorter duration of chemotherapy with an increased reliance on radiation. While less commonly utilized, it represents a suitable alternative to doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and dacobazine and can be utilized in both early and advanced Hodgkin lymphoma. 
Advantages to the regimen include reduced cumulative doses of doxorubicin and bleomycin and thereby a reduced incidence of late effects of these antineoplastics. Select patients may benefit from escalating therapy to the BEAACOPP regimen. This intensive chemotherapy regimen appears to improve tumor control, although a definitive survival advantage has yet to be elucidated. Individuals with four or more adverse international prognostic score factors and the physical capacity to tolerate the markedly increased toxicity of the combination are likely to derive the greatest potential advantage from this approach. Given the multiple nodal sites on both sides of the diaphragm and the involvement of the bone marrow, LPG has stage 4 Hodgkin lymphoma and should be treated with 6 to 8 cycles of doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and dacobazine. Although she has advanced disease, she has a favorable prognosis and long-term remission would be anticipated. On routine follow-up 9 months after completion of therapy, LPG is found to have an extensive recurrence of nodal enlargement which is confirmed to be relapsed disease. So my next question to you reads. What are appropriate treatment options for LPG? Unlike numerous malignant diseases, patients with Hodgkin lymphoma maintain a reasonable likelihood of attaining cure in the setting of relapsed or refractory disease. Relapses consisting of minimal disease occurring more than 12 months after documented remission suggest a better prognosis. Salvage chemotherapy alone or with radiation is often sufficient therapy. Patients with an early or extensive relapse or primary refractory disease generally require second-line chemotherapy followed by autologous bone marrow transplant. Selection of therapy is dependent on individual patient characteristics and provider preference, because there is currently no standard of care. Effective regimens in this setting mimic those used in relapsed non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and include DHAP, ESHAP, and ICE. Repetition of initial therapy or use of an alternative first-line regimen may be reasonable in a minority of patients. Brentuximab vedotin is a CD30-targeted monoclonal antibody linked to an antitubulin antineoplastic agent that has demonstrated activity in heavily pretreated patients failing bone marrow transplant and or two prior lines of chemotherapy. LPG should likely receive a salvage regimen such as ESHAP followed by autologous stem cell transplant given her early and extensive relapse. The aim of her therapy should remain curative. So there you have it, our highly esteemed viewers and listeners, that brings us to the end of this video. If it benefited you in any way, kindly remember to give it a thumbs up to like it and to share it widely with your peers. Please leave your comments at the bottom. And if you haven't yet done so, I humbly urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would like to promise you all that the very, very best is yet to come. Thank you very much for viewing this video. On behalf of our senior colleague, Dr. Nath Arawa, I sincerely appreciate your partnership continued support and kind collaboration. We look forward to interacting with you in the next video, which will be part 470.